But Danielle, we don't. You like that, don't you? Okay. I kick the bucket too. I would. If I don't bounce it, I'll turn it Yeah. I mean, this is it. All right. We're live on YouTube. Okay. We're going to start the, uh, I guess this will be a special meeting. Yes. Work, yeah, workshop. Special, special, meeting. special meeting on September the 8th. The first on the agenda would be the uh, board review of framework and timeline of the Endeavor Convention Center. Who's up? Miss Christy and Jason. Okay, Miss Christy. Good afternoon, board. How are y'all? All right. Fine. Y'all should have. Um, sorry. Um, y'all should have in front of y'all a copy of some documents that we have prepared for y'all. I'm just going to briefly kind of go through this and then take any questions or comments from y'all. Um, first off, we have the mission statement that we have identified for the museum and the convention center. Um, each one of those I'll read out individually. For the museum, our mission is to enhance the lives of our neighbors and grow the economy of Jackson County by highlighting the rich history of our area, including the former Dozier School for Boys, through preservation and understanding the century's worth of history and societal changes. For the convention center, our mission is to grow the economy of Jackson County by hosting year-round meetings, conventions, and events that improve the quality of life of residents and visitors alike. Uh, we felt that it was um, going to be pertinent to have the mission statement for each of those developed before we go into this process, just so we can make sure that we are meeting the overall mission and everything that we do. Um, the desired outcome for this committee for the Museum and Convention Center would basically be to get us some construction ready plans so that we can get ready to go into developing a Museum and Convention Center. Um, we'll go on to the next page where you have a strategic plan summary. Um, I'll let y'all read through that on your own. The, the key takeaway from that is that the Museum and Convention Center development will be the catalyst that moves the former Dozier School for Boys into Endeavor Park, a first-class destination complete with an autism facility, housing development, and mixed-use commercial area, resulting in an enhancement of the West End community of Mariana and creating an anchor from the interstate to historic downtown. Hey, Christy, can I interrupt? Uh, before we move past the mission statements, we were hopeful for y'all to give us some feedback if y'all feel like those mission statements encompass what you all were envisioning. I know you're going to use dying to say something. Pardon? I've seen it. Well, I'm just looking at it. Uh, it looks like we're putting the museum ahead of the convention center throughout this whole thing. It's not really being put forward. It just kind Is of- Is that just the way you typed it? Just the way I typed it. When we get into the timeline, you'll actually see, and there's actually a, a spot in here that it says that the convention center um, would likely come before the museum just because of the state of the facilities at the moment. Um, it just, when we're typing museum and convention center seems to roll off the tongue a little bit better than convention center museum. And also the, the convention center is basically already there. It's just, you know, when you said likely, not the museum much, is it's going to be before the museum because the museum's got way too much work to do. Yeah, the, there's definitely a, a very big difference in the state of the facilities there um, between yeah. those two. We just want to make sure before we move past that part, if there's something you all would like added to the statements or changed. I mean, this is really your direction to us on the vision that will drive this entire process. What, who is this committee? I know I'm going away from mission. What's this committee entail? Who is it? Well, we're going to get into the committee. Do you want us to jump to the committee? No, 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 no. I will deal with it on that. I just had to look hard enough in advance to see it, but I just, that was one of my questions. I got to deal with it in a minute. Okay. Any comments, questions on the uh, mission statements? Okay. Continue. Yes, I, I, I got a, I got something here that I don't. Is think. it on the mission statement? No. Nope. Okay. Well then, hold on just along. a second. Carry on, Miss Christie. All right. So we identified a few key elements for the first phase, which will be these. Uh, 
plans that we come up with for the convention center and museum. Um, I'll just give you kind of a brief rundown of these. If y'all have any comments that you want to say on each one of these tasks, please let us address it at that point. What page are you on, Christy? I'll uh, just flip or whatever you flip the yeah. back or the front. They're not page. numbered. Yeah. So if you start on your agenda page, it says border view of framework and timeline. She is starting on page, what, two? Pass that. It's back to page plan. two? Yeah, page two. So phase one includes the development of engineering and architectural plans. This is necessary to bring facilities up to code and include amenities needed to utilize the spaces as the board decides uh, or the steering committee points us in the direction. Um, the renovated spaces planned to use will allow for a better use of the existing space while also identifying connectivity between the two facilities. I'm um, not going to read everything word for word on this. So the first task that we would have would be to identify the capacity limits, the use of space, and the potential clients. We anticipate this taking about two weeks, beginning sometime next week through the first or second of October. Um, the, the main things that we'd be doing during that portion of this project would be helping us to better understand what way each of the spaces can be used for the different events and then reaching out to in-state meeting planners and other organizations to determine actual needs throughout the state. Y'all have any questions or comments on that? I had you jumped ahead of me. Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, I, my, my, again, this is all something that you may or can ask kind of pertinent to it. I mean, we don't know the capacity of it yet. I mean, also we know it's 10,000 square foot. What's the 3.7, what's the number on per square foot? We don't know how, what the fire rating capacity is on it per occupant. So that'd be one of the things that's on here is to get the actual square footage, the numbers that we had, I believe were estimates. And the first thing would be to figure out what those capacity limits are based on the different ways that we set up the room. So if it's a banquet style versus theater or auditorium, any of those different styles are gonna have different seating capacity limits. <clears throat> and First thing would be to identify what those are so we actually can see how those uh, spaces can be used for events. Um, under your uh, strategic plan summary. Yes, sir. One, two, three, the third paragraph. Yes, sir. Following decades of abuse allegations. Why are, why are we putting that in there? Yeah. It, I don't think that accomplishes anything we pertaining to this. We can strike that if you would like to. Oh, well, my preference would be strike it. I mean, that, that's We're in the past. That. that will be reflected in the museum, I'm sure. But uh, I, I'm not so sure we need it here. Because it's an allegation. Uh, third paragraph. Right here, right after 2011. Well, though, okay. there will be areas that we have to address when we're doing our, our story plan and trying to figure sure. out what we are putting together for grants and funding and then just overall having the history laid out. I hope um, this is the history of Jackson County. Right. Complete. Yeah, who's Everyone. On, who's going who's to be the, the gatekeeper of that narrative? For what the history is yeah. on that component? I mean, who, who's, who's going to be that deciding factor? I think it'd, it'd go to the steering committee and we would work together to build that from what the, the board directs us to do in this component. So you want to strike that following de decades of abuse and that, I, I don't see it needing to be there either myself. Uh, yeah, that, oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, we know it's going to be in the museum, yeah. but we're getting away from Dozier. We're going to a Dever. Yeah, we turn that no sense. And, Do I have any other questions on that portion? We hadn't read it. Not at this point. <laughs> I'll read through it later, I might. Do you want me you want me to read it out loud? No, no, no. That's no, gonna be this, a lot. I'll read through it later and I'll contact you directly. Commissioner if Peacock didn't follow instructions. We I didn't I just got it. I know. Okay. 
All right, did y'all have any comments on task one, identify capacity limits, use of space and potential clients? You will see there is a timeline at the bottom that um, loose dates, we just needed something in there to kind of figure out where we're going and try and get this done in a timely manner. So we were hoping to have our first meeting and assign the first group of tasks on September 15th, have all of those first tasks completed by October 2nd, review them in-house October 5th through 6th, have the steering committee review them and officially appoint them to the TDC and BOCC on October 7th and have the BOCC and TDC hold a special meeting before the, the TD or the BOCC meeting on October 13th. So and that would be just to, to so review this first phase. That way we're making sure everything aligns together. So you'll give us the information before we come to the meeting, right? Yes. Thank you. Sir? I think we don't we don't do it at eleven fifteen <laughs> just for kicks and giggles. <laughs> okay. I'm fine with six fifteen if Danielle is. Clay will be here I knew what you was gonna say. Go ahead. All right, so the second task would be to determine the needed amenities. So after contacting our in-state meeting planners, once we know our, our actual capacity limits, we would figure out what do we need to be able to host those different kinds of events, um, meetings, any kind of space that we're trying to utilize in that area. So we would reach out to the client bases. We would figure out exactly what is needed to transform one from one event to the next. So if you've got a wedding or something that's coming in that weekend, what's it gonna take to get that place ready for a convention center on Monday? Um, we need to also address the museum exhibit needs based on knowledge that we've gained from outside sources and figure out the furnishings, tables, chairs, and internal and external aesthetics that we will be looking towards. Um, also in this would be discussing the kitchens, the office space, storage space, and any connectivity. And that would be not just right there inside the building, but into the other areas of Endeavor Park. Uh, again, a timeline, your tasks assigned on October 7th, which if you'll look back is that steering committee review for task one. So the goal of this is to take one task. When you have the review by the steering committee, their next thing is to get the, the next portion of this plan assigned to them so they can begin working and we don't have lag in between uh, tasks that we're working on. So their tasks would be completed by October 20th. We would review October 21st through 22nd. The steering committee would review all of the recommendations on October 23rd, and then we would have the TDC and BOCC review phase or task number two on October 27th. Do you have any questions on this portion? Keep them busy. <laughs> keep them busy and, you know, be able to keep it um, moving forward, not lose any momentum on this. So our task number three would be to identify and catalog existing artifacts available within the community. I only gave this one a week and a half because uh, I think we need to stress that we don't have a place to actually put these at the moment. Um, so this would be just a way for us to reach out and figure out what do we have, which a lot of that we can go back and, and look from previous meetings and figure out where we're at on um, historical information and then also take down notes to determine what else we need to do to fill in gaps. Um, so I don't think this one would take too too long just because we don't have a, a place to actually store anything at the moment. Yes, Commissioner Peacock. Could you use one of those cottages out there maybe to uh, store this stuff? Are they climate controlled at the moment? They could be, I think. They, they've got units. I no air conditioning. I don't know electricity out there in that part. I was on the cottage side. Well, by the time we get this far along, they're probably okay. Will be. I did, yeah, I did just in the uh, October, something a month from now. Yeah. I think the her point was by that. we would just want to start cataloging on right. paper, but there will come a time, and maybe we can plan for that as we go through the process of housing, having a place identified to house these. You'd want them secured. I mean, yeah, obviously humidity control. Right. Yeah, yeah. 
she got talking about any artifacts of memorabilia, pictures, right. anything that was relative to that time start frame. collecting a list of these are, and this is the point of contact. That is what you were thinking. Right? Yes. Okay. And just start okay. making that list until we actually have a place that we can store them and, and better house them in a safe environment. But that is actually something we do need to put on the radar to plan for where we would store them, how we would keep them secure, that sort of thing. All right, y'all have any other questions on this part? Again, an overlapping timeline, um, path design on October 23rd, completed by October 30th, review November 2nd through 3rd, have the steering committee um, and direct it to the board by November 4th and have the TEC and BSCC review it November 10th. Task number four would be to identify funding sources. Um, this would allow committee members and county staff to explore funding opportunities for the project. Uh, this is a little bit more geared towards um, some of the necessary funds for getting these projects to fruition and then also completing them later on. So we actually have two deliverables that will be combined together and that's 4.1 and 4.2 and 4.3 and 4.4 will be kind of put together um, in terms of getting the task actually accomplished. So we'd wanna be able to identify any public funds, grant opportunities and public private partnerships or nonprofit options for each of these facilities. And then consider the cost of operations and maintenance for facilities beyond construction while giving thought to the actual cost of construction. Um, the second component of that would be creating a marketing plan uh, for each of the two facilities and then identifying how these facilities will measure success and in what ways they will assess whether their operations are successful or not. And that will come into a, a future phase as well. Do y'all have any questions on that component? So tasks would be assigned on November 3rd. Tasks will be completed on November 13th. We would review the 16th and 17th. The steering committee would get the first two deliverables, 4.1 and 4.2, back to them by November 18th. And then the second set of deliverables, the 4.3 and 4.4 would be December 2nd. BOCC and TDC review would be December 8th. And the last component is community meetings, revisions, and final plans. So all the meetings of this Endeavor Steering Committee and the um, obviously BOCC TDC meetings, they fall under the Sunshine Law, so they would be open to the public. Uh, we would ideally have a final meeting to show off the, um, the completed steps, which of course the renderings would be available along the way. But this would be one final chance for people to come in and offer any of the suggestions that have not been available during the, the county meetings. We would actually open up this for a week um, from November 30th to December 4th and have that window for people to make any kind of last minute suggestions on these and then have the final review um, by the steering committee and um, TDC and BOCC sometime in between December 8th and 31st. You have any questions? Before you move on from that, if, if I don't have any questions on that one. Is, um, and I really am going to let David help me here because I'm not exactly sure how we're going to, it's sort of several things running at once, but uh, we have an opportunity to apply for the gym to opt through the CDBG DR to make it one of our shelters. And so the benefit of that, if it would, if, it, if we were successful is we could get some of the um, items funded like HVAC, the electrical, plumbing. I don't know what you would want to add to that, but um, that process is due November 30th. Yeah, so the CBG DR, uh, you know, there's like 228 million available for that. They're going to buy it in two cycles, 114 million in the first cycle, and that's due no November the 30th. And uh, we still have some questions. They have they just put out the application for that. And they're having a workshop on it the 17th. Uh, the county is eligible to turn in five applications uh, for that. Any entity is eligible to turn in five applications. And 
one question in there is you have to turn in an application for each project. What we don't know is what is a project. And so we're asking that question, the land is asking that question, and they'll come out. But what I mean by that is they may let us draw a circle around and Deborah out there and say everything you want to do out there is a project. Gym, water and sewer, paving roads, do everything, call that a project. Or they may say, no, if you want to pave roads, that's a project. If you want to do water, that's a project. Sewer is a project. Uh, gym is a project. So we need to get an answer on that. But in their scoring criteria, uh, they give, I agree with me, but there's significant points for doing not for paving, but for stormwater, water, and wastewater. And then the only other type of project that's identified to get uh, points is renovations or repairs to a shelter to an existing structure. So if they let us draw a circle around all of Endeavor, then that would be a project that would get absolute maximum points. You get shelter points and you would get uh, water and sewer drainage. So there's potential if uh, jumping around a little bit on the uh, on the, the gym to call it a uh, shelter and apply for that funding and you know equip it for a uh, shelter. Now there's some things that would go into a shelter that probably wouldn't go into just a normal convention center. And so we're in the initial process of thinking about that. But for instance, uh, showers. And so, I'm just giving you initial thinking on that. So we could add an area of space that we'd add on to the gym that would include the showers and generator and things required for a uh, shelter. And if the CBGDR didn't get funded, then we wouldn't uh, add those things to the project. But if it did get funded, there's a good chance it could pick up a huge amount of the uh, Cost uh, on the gym uh, for that. I mean, the HVAC, really, all of the, pretty much all of the renovations, you know, other than maybe AV equipment and those type of things. David, what what kind of time frame would you think there would be an answer on that to know which direction? Okay, so I think it'll move quick. So another thing is we've got our normal design process that we want to go through to design the convention center, but these applications are due November the 30th, and part of the points on there is readiness to proceed. And so one thing we want to do is have a roll, roll of drawings prepared by November 30th that we can say, see, we're ready to proceed, proceed on it. We know we've still got some design process and you know, things to go along, you know, uh, final on it, but I think if we lay a, a set of drawings uh, on the table, we'll get all the points for the readiness to uh, proceed on that. I think that we stand a pretty good chance of getting several million dollars in CDBGDR money for the, the gym. Mr. Pinker. David, there's showers already in there. Those locker rooms have showers in them. They, they do. Uh, and I, ain't got, I mean, I, I think our thought process is a lot of all that would get gutted because that's, uh, you know, just old. It's old. Yeah. It's <laughs> old. old. It's old. It's, it's, you, no. My vintage, huh? And, and, yeah. Uh, that's a nice way of saying it. And, you know, if you want to go with the, 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 the convention center, you want it all to be real upscale. It's not you don't want to use up any of your square footage. Well, if we can upgrade all that with and it qualifies for that, that would be almost a no-brainer, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Um, you're talking about making that a shelter. Did we do anything to the roof when we were working on it to possibly? Yeah, actually, when we were doing the roof, it came back, and, and this might not be exact, but to meet the current wind standards and all. Uh, curlins on the roof needed to be spaced at four feet, and they were actually at six or seven feet, six feet, I think. And so 
So the question was asked, do you want to just put the roof back on there and the purlins that they are, or come put a purlin in between and make a new code? And we made the decision we want to make new codes. Uh, because we, we knew, aside from the shelter, this was going to be a long term facility. So the, the roof was, was reconstructed to meet current wind load codes. And all of them. What about windows? The windows. They, they got they're all up high, high, aren't they? They're up high, uh, but they're they're old. I mean, you know, if you want to build a, a nice facility or uh, facility, those, those windows need to be replaced, and, and uh, about everything in there needs to be. It's a solid building. Just need uh, upgraded. Solid flooring and solid and all that, but uh, windows and all the electric fixtures and. You think they'll cover parking lots? I mean, I know obviously it's based upon occupancy of that building, but uh, we don't tie that in to any other buildings potentially in the master so, plan. So we're working on the parking. So you got the small parking lot next right. to it. The roads out in front of it are wide enough. Uh, I believe we're going to be able to get angle parking all the way up and down those. And then you can jump up the hill where the autism school is. There's a pretty big parking lot there. And then our main parking, we're looking at where the swimming pool is, is to fill that in for the parking lot uh, there. So I think we have potential for a lot of parking out there. Dr. Spire? What are the plans for the uh, old mechanical shop across the street from, from there? What are we doing with those? Yeah, are there any plans for that? So across the street, <coughs> right now in our demo plans, is Pretty much all of those buildings get demolished uh, except the chimney and the, the uh, building that's right around the chimney, the old boiler room. We're saving it. It's, in my opinion, it's got a good roof on it. It's a nice uh, building. And then there are two other buildings there that have good roofs uh, on them, good structures to them that I think can be uh, kind of craft shops and those kind of things. Because kind of envision that area around the chimney kind of being kind of a tourist, craft shop, restaurant kind of area. And uh, so all those buildings over there, there are three of them that we're, we're keeping in our current demolition uh, plans. And that's based on going in and looking and saying they're structurally sound. I mean, they need some work. They got a good roof. You know, some of the rest of them have wood trusses that are busted and all. But these three buildings have still... When's that chimney falling? <laughs> Is it stable? It would have stood a hurricane. That wasn't enough, <laughs> my question. No, I, <laughs> have y'all looked at it? We have not. We will, though. You need to look at it before this yeah. demolition crew leaves. Yeah. When are they starting? They, they'll probably start in uh, about three weeks, four weeks uh, on it. I, I, the uh, uh, Great Southern Demolition, I talked to them uh, Friday, and they thought they'd have all their bonds and contract and paperwork to me this week. Uh, they were they're anxious to get started, so we put that together, put together a contract, run it through the attorney, and then we have three construction conference and I think we'll probably have that free construction conference within three weeks and then we'll get started out there. Dave that warehouse building in the very back of those yourself where, where are we at on that? What we're doing so what we're doing in our demo is taking off uh, taking the, the old beat up roof on that same thing on the clinic we're taking off the parts everything that looks like it. you know we our demo is not repairing the roof or doing anything, but we're getting rid of ugly out there. And so I do, I do have some concern on that roof. James got CNC to just come look at it, and um, I conferred with David over his opinion. He agreed that it does need a full roof replacement, yeah. and the estimated cost is two hundred thousand, nine thousand square foot warehouse. So just so y'all know, we did follow up on that estimate for the warehouse. And, and kind of tell you, you know, where we're on the money. So our, our demolition bids that we turn in, they're, they were about a, a 1.4 million. And uh, so we 
got a little over three, three and a half million left in our job growth grant uh, that we can spend. I mean, my, my approach a little bit is there's not very many strings attached to that job growth grant. And so I kind of like to think I like to keep it in my back pocket because we can use it for whatever we need. And we're going to get these grants as hard as we can to see what we bring in in grants. But we do have that money uh, sitting there and we can uh, spend it, but, but it's almost got no strings attached to it. So Didn't we have some plans for some of that? For the job growth? Yes. Grant. And while we're in the design process of designing the water, the sewer, the electric, the parking, uh, we're doing the autism renovation plans. So we've got all those plans uh, coming together. And so uh, ultimately that $3 million that's left, that, yeah, we'll come back to you and say, here's what we think all the costs are. What do you want to put out with bids and what do you want to spend that on? But we're hoping in the meantime, we're hoping by this November 30, we get back to your uh, answer to the question, the application due November 30th. I think they'll, we'll know a good idea on that uh, CBGDR funding uh, by the 1st of January, for sure. They're going to they're gonna push that money out pretty quick on it. So if we can hit it, hit it on a lot of that money, then that, that Let's just keep that three million uh, in our back pocket a little bit more on it. But that'll be up to you. And if you want to go put a roof on that warehouse tomorrow, you can use those job growth grants uh, to do that. Is that the only bid we got? Was two hundred thousand? No, no, they didn't bid. They just gave an estimate. They went and looked. Five thousand square foot building is two hundred thousand. Nine thousand. Oh, nine thousand. Okay. So I just really wanted David to speak to. This process that Christy's, you know, suggesting is very much focused on the convention center and the museum, but there's some that's going to be running in tandem. Yeah, we got off track. Oh no, well, no, that's fine. Fine. no, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so we got some good opportunities. That that job grant, uh, how much was that? Five million. It was five point eight. So it's five point eight eight million. About 750000 is set aside for our autism program. Our bids were about $1.4 million. And so it leaves about $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000, $300,000,
said that would be bringing us to the end of the, the first phase. Uh, you'll notice phase two, three, and four, um, we can go through each of these, but this is pretty much the continuation of the process. Um, during this first phase, probably by the beginning to mid of October, we would start laying this other stuff out just a little bit further with more timeline deadlines and working with different members of the steering committee and other stakeholders within the community. Um, this would basically just be continue these projects on to fruition. Um, it goes into all of the, the different areas that we would need to consider in the long run would be the last um, component of the proposed four phases being the continual assessment of the activities and programs, which ties back into the metrics of success that we would identify during this first phase. But I think some of this information we wouldn't know exactly on the, the dates and stuff until we started getting in, into some of the other areas. What is, and I'm, not, I'm sure I've probably heard the estimate, but what is the estimate of the construction of the convention center? Do we have any idea? One time was 20 million. Huh? One time it was 20 million. I heard not, not on the oh. gym. Oh, no, the gym. Oh, I thought you were talking yeah. about the no, uh, some of the gym convention. Really got that far in, but typically when you do a renovation or something, you know, $50 a square foot. Well, I just know that. Looking back on our fire station, yes, that's not going to work. I mean, we went from seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, less than a million to two million. Okay. Do y'all have anything else, uh, William? Uh, um, I think on that first part, we were really just looking, you know, if you all think we're missing the mark or if you think that this is about what you all, I mean, I thought Christy did a really good job coming up with timelines and actual goals to accomplish. Um, I think our goal is to get you all a convention center because that's what right. y'all directed us. And so she's done an outstanding job um, researching and putting it together. But we want y'all's input and your, if there's anything you think we're missing, we want to hear that. We want to make sure we, we accomplish it. I would just like to say I concur with Will Ann. Christy, I think you did a very good job with this. Okay. Now get out the big whip and make it happen. We can make it happen. I, keep I them on task. That. I believe we can keep them on task, and I think the timeline is, is very reasonable. Next. So, William, do we need to have a motion or anything on this, or do we just move straight into the appointment of the steering committee? Um, I think it's I mean, I think it's on the record that y'all are okay with it. I don't necessarily think it needs a motion. Okay. All right. Well, then we will go into the second part, which is to appoint our actual steering committee members. Um, I think y'all have a separate sheet of yeah. that. In your packet's not accurate, so did y'all put a new sheet out? I don't think that there was. Okay. Um, I'll just let you go through it. Okay, so we have the, the following people identified um, for the steering committee based on experience and subject matter expertise. District 1, Lily Clark. District 2, Brian Braxton. District 3, Travis Blanton. District 4, Paul Smith. District 5, John Hamilton. We have Commissioner Pate uh, to represent the, the Board of County Commissioners. Jacob Strickland from Jackson County TDC. Travis Ephraim, Linda Franklin, Leon Kelly, Pat Chris, and Cynthia Alvarez. How did we come up with the, these people? I don't know. I know. I know a few of them, but what, I mean, what, what's their background? Where's their... So a lot of them have uh, pretty varied backgrounds. Um, 
Some of them have the, the historical experience. Uh, some of them have direct ties through either Dozier or the historical component on that. Um, facilities, uh, there are several of them on this that have extensive experience in facility, either management operation or restoring a facility into a current use. Um, it's, it's a very broad board that I think is gonna cover a lot of different areas of such subject matter expertise. Um, we also wanted to think about the, the big picture out there and how all the facilities of Endeavor will ideally kind of work together and wanted to make sure that we have something that's going to uh, represent kind of a, a bigger picture at Endeavor. Uh, we would have some ex officio members, um, Rick Taylor, that we've all met through Hattiesburg um, Convention Commission. He has agreed to be able to come in and, and speak to the, the board and, um, or the committee and direct them and say, you know, this is the, the process that we took and just kind of give that insight um, and then work with some of the other state officials in different areas and um, other applicable members that can serve as subcommittees when the time comes right. Will Ann. Yes. You're not on this board? Well, we decided to not make since you were on it. So we you've got for Travis Ephraim and you got Jim, Jim Dean. Dean. No, no, we removed Jim Dean. Jim, Jim, so this Jim. Well, our list is not correct. It, no, the list that y'all have, no, it's not correct. Um, Jim Dean would not, he would just be if we needed um, kind of same thing in ex officio that come well, in. We will Can you be, say that list again? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sorry. Um, District 1, Lily Clark. District 2, Brian Braxton. District 3, Travis Blanton. District 4, Paul Smith. District 5, John Hamilton. Commissioner Pate. Jacob Strickland. Travis Ephraim. Linda Franklin. Leon Kelly. Pat Crisp. And Cynthia Alvarez. I don't. Okay, why not Linda Franklin? Yeah, tell me why uh, we got some of these people on here. Yeah. I don't know them. Yeah, can we get a bio of them? I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't know. Yes, and we, we I mean, actually tried to have that ready. We didn't quite make the mark. We were waiting on a couple. So sure, we'd be glad to get the bios. We could probably have them maybe tomorrow. Who, who appointed these extra yeah. people? How did they get there? So obviously Commissioner Pate, BOCC, Jacob Strickland, um, TDC. Some of the, the people like, um, I know personally, Travis Ephraim has a lot of experience in history and community involvement. Um, Linda Franklin was involved with our working group uh, when we began work looking into the concept of a museum. So there's a historical component there and the, the sense of community. Um, Leon Kelly, again, he worked with the working group, but he also was a former employee of Dozier. So he's got a little bit of insight on some of the places that we can go for historical information in that aspect. Pat Crisp, she is the head of the Chipola Historic Trust. So she will be able to direct us in places to catalog additional resources on the history of Jackson County. And Cynthia Alvarez is a um, huge advocate in the community and also works with some of the autism board members in the office board for Dozier and or Endeavor and we felt like that she would be a good component on this board as well. I was asked to appoint one person. I'm just trying to figure out how all these other people got on there. Yeah, I mean, are you representing our, our districts by a name beside them? Yeah. I'm assuming they came from your district. This, this oh, they came from my district. I thought it meant that we... Yeah. Well, you were asked so was that clear? I don't remember nope. if we discussed yours or not. Well, I, <laughs> I don't think I intended to put that one by District 4. It was just an option for District mm -hmm. 4. So it, it, it could just be an extra. If you okay, have no, a I mean, I, I'm District not saying. 4. So I, I'll RCC thank and, the list and come and go. I think right we now. need to yeah. revisit this list. <clears throat> we just need to revisit it as quickly as possible if we're going to stick to the timeline and the objectives that the steering committee would I mean there won't be anything for them to do until we have one but that's fine we'll just have to move everything back a couple of weeks well not necessarily if you get the information to us and they decide with whoever did Brian yes, agree was, yes. great okay good 
Okay. I mean, the ones that we've appointed, I don't have a problem with them start working. And the others, I just, I want to take a look at them. I don't know who they are. I know Jacob was on there for the TDC. Mm -hmm. Jacob's on the TDC board. You know Miss Pat. I don't know Miss Alvarez that I know of. I I'm not. Right. I might, but I don't. That was a last minute thought because of her being on the autism board to make sure that as the she she's been very involved with that, just so that as things, if they do cross over, we have some awareness between the different committees or boards. Um, that was where that thought came from. So you're going to give us some information? Yes, okay. you know. I think they completed it right before the meet. Like, it just wasn't time to print it and have it to y'all. Yeah, I've got five. I'm going to ask. I have five responses. All these people except for three. Two, three. And we probably have theirs by now. Um, so we could definitely have it, maybe not by at the end of the day, which is soon, but probably by mid-morning if that's fine. Or I can work on it tonight. We'll be here tonight. Okay. If y'all could gather it, they do have a meeting at six. They could possibly review in between, maybe. Okay. So maybe just get what y'all can for now. Nicole yeah. could help you print it or whatever. We can do that. Okay. So the only other item for this meeting was at um, a meeting or so ago, you all directed us to put the residential piece of Endeavor out to uh, bid, um, or RFQ rather. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we met, staff met, started discussing how to accomplish that. And a lot of questions came up over, well, what exactly is the goal? What is the vision? So I really just want to hear from y'all when you made the motion, what it is you're after. A plan for the property, or so much uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many acres was that? About three hundred twenty acres. How much is that usable? <clears throat> Pretty much most of that. Some of that was. Yeah. Some of that we're, we're south of Boozer, so some of that was. Probably, and we've got it probably fifteen twenty percent as well. So more like three hundred acres. Yeah. I think what the intention was. We need to get something going on on Endeavor, and the uh, the gym was the quickest thing we knew of. I know the autism uh, school was going, but it takes a lot more little mechanism to get to get that going. So, and you know, the housing could be something that could get started and uh, well quicker than some of the There was a shortage others. of uh, workforce housing in Jackson County and the area. So uh, we certainly, uh, there is a demand for that. Right, Mr. Melvin? Yeah. Well, what's the density out there on, on that property? What's it zoned for there? I'll, I'll I think it's one currently in Ag 2, because that's county. I think yeah, we've looked at that. Um, there is a land use change process unfolding. So that's a, a major mass amendment. So that'll that'll be a process. Well, didn't we agree on that? I mean, yes, you I'm did. not saying that that was supposed to happen all of a sudden, but right. we did. Yes, y'all did. We adopted the uh, map or what is it? Our plan? The master plan. Master you plan. Did. Okay. I, so, you know, from my from my perspective, what I would like to see is us come up with someone or some corporation. <laughs> that will design the uh, that entire area for development. For a multiple field. field Whether we do it 20 it, acres at a time yeah. or 30 acres no. or 10 or Oh, five. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know. Be we got to start somewhere. I'm not a... Someone designed the, the master plan and then we could find builders or developers that come in and build out certain areas, maybe. So in that land use change, what would that make the density then? We changed it to residential, except that one piece of the T was mixed use. Right. Mm -hmm. So what what is that? 
uh, I'm sorry, I didn't actually learn, four to one. Well, if you have all of your utilities, uh, water, sewer, and paved road frontage at four to one, which all that will be there for that size of a development. So we're going to work on CBD GDR for the water and sewer for that project. <clears throat> Mm. Won't be able to do yeah, that. Because, well, yeah, we did discuss that actually. Yes. That part of the Poozer, the Poozer project, when they, they run that, when they pave it, possibly. When they pave it, can they do that infrastructure when they paving it? I think you said we're probably a year or so out on like, paving Poozer, maybe. I think that's a uh, uh, theme of mitigation. I'm not sure why you're thinking. Mr. Mellon, could I ask you to speak into the microphone? Thank you. You, get called to the <laughs> you can pull the chair up there to the table. Uh, you get called to the table. Well, I'm getting a request. Yeah, yeah they're getting yeah. requests. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Poozer. I know we're designing Poozer. Uh, I'm not sure what the schedule is or what the funding source is. I think that was FEMA mitigation. Uh, it was RF and uh, rural infrastructure grant for the design. For the design, yeah. I might be wrong. That's, that's paving from uh, 10 Avenue, Council Highway 273. Well, you know, we got that flooding down on the other right. and them houses and all that stuff. And I, I wanted to think it was a mitigation on the paving. I might be wrong. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I, I'm not real clear. I think there's funding for the mitigation for the flooding area. So I think you've got uh, FEMA funding to pay that, not to pay the rest of it, but it's all getting designed. Well, Mashburn and Poozer, we need to be looking at that pretty serious if we're going to make all this other stuff. Well, I think, I think to answer the question on what we're going to do with it, is directly going to be tied for the infrastructural stuff that has to go out there because if not, it does, the density changes. So, so investors or developers or whoever's going to come out of here are looking for those numbers to be that's seen. That's right. So if we don't right. make sure we start on process off the in tandem, if yeah. not one ahead of the other one, because yeah. that, that, that process will be very attractive to someone, you know, that, that's got the density out there. Yeah, and, and we're working on the design of all the uh, utilities on that. And, and we can do some layouts on the residential Side of it I would think that we may want to segment parts of it, you know, one price of housing in one area, another price in another area, and maybe some apartments. I don't know. And I think it'd be good to meet with some of the uh, developer companies like World American, you know, we've been talking about World American, some about tiny house development and we want some real houses. Yeah. Well, you want some houses too that's affordable because you get into some of them, you know, they, they got some great footprints out there now. Houses are you know, super energy effect, uh, efficient, and there's some of them need these big companies, window companies, styrofoam companies, uh, with the ICM stuff. They're wanting to put model houses out. Let you come in and see that you got a you know, 1,500 square foot house on a uh, $60 a month letter bill. Yeah. I well, mean, so, it, so that, yeah, that's some of the that's projects. That's what Habitat. Sure, does. absolutely. Yeah. David, you have more experience at this than, than we do. I, I guess you do. I, listen. I know I don't. So what would you recommend to, to get started? I think, Jim, Dry, we, uh, we do some layouts on the uh, Housing, how to break up that residential uh, area and all, you know, mixture of multifamily, carving out the first 10 acres and then maybe putting that out to see if there's a uh, developer that's uh, interested in it. You know, think, think about from a county standpoint of, of uh, you sell the land, do you give the land, do you put the utilities in there on it? You know, it, when you do subdivisions, uh, a typical subdivision, you're going to have $30,000 in, in a lot uh, to you water and sewer and everything like that in that ballpark. Well, you can buy lots for $20,000 now. So that's the reason there's not a 
big emphasis on, on uh, people putting in subdivisions too much now, so you can't make any money putting in a subdivision you know, right now. But there is a demand for workforce housing. So it's kind of an odd thing that there's big demand for workforce housing, but there's no workforce housing getting built because the profitability is not quite there. The demand's there, but the so if we made the land attractive. And, and the tie-ins. Could we do the tie-ins, too? Do we not get grants or applications or, uh, or do something from our board standpoint to allow the tie-ins so they don't have tie-in fees for your water septic, the impact fees? I mean, some of that could be waived, which is a huge. I mean, right. some of ours are you know, 11,000 to hook up your water and sewer. I mean, yeah. so if you can do so some of that. So that's part of it is think about what incentives sure. that you want to get there. Uh, Ms. David, is there any any way we can tie in solar to that project? We've talked about this before. You know, we look at uh, you know, our main consumption of energy, you know, the sheriff's office, the jail endeavor as a whole. Is there one way that we can also tie in this to something that offer? Because I understand you, I think you was institutionally involved with the Right. With a Unimac building out there, is it like sixty-one thousand a year? The new little solar thing is saving out there at uh, Unimac. Yeah. Is there some way we can tie that in to where not only can we, you know, get that our benefit of existing buildings, but consumers that are coming from a residential uh, standpoint are saying, "Listen, this is tied into a, a bigger grid of a of a solar, so this only either further reduce some of your cost analysis on your, you know, your electric bill." Yeah. You know, kind of our experience with solar, we just did. Four and a half million dollar solar for the city for their wastewater treatment plant that's just right over the hill over here, and then uh, the uh, catalyst was a million and a half dollar solar bill there. Uh, the wastewater treatment that was an 80 percent grant from the state. The catalyst was a hundred percent grant uh, from the state, and so going through that and, and looking at the numbers and all, if you don't get a grant, solar is Kind of a break-even deal. I mean, it makes you scratch your head on whether you do it. You probably have a, a payback in 15 or 20 years, and so you kind of look and think, if I don't get a grant, am I okay with a 15 or 20-year payback? And hopefully, a hailstorm doesn't come along, or you know, those type of things. But if you get a grant, then then it is uh, uh, certainly uh, viable. So that's that's a good thing to always be looking for to to see if there are some grant funds. And, and that's where the state moved, you know, in fact, these were the, the wastewater treatment plant from Mariana was the first ever state revolving fund grant to a municipality or anybody in the state of Florida for solar. So it was their experiment uh, to do that. So a lot more wastewater treatment plants are gonna do that. So some other entities may move into that grant funding. Well, my, my, my point was we have some of the money left over. I wonder what those costs in generation with a grant a matching or whatever can be offered out there and some of that fund that to where you know you have a source of, you know, revenue to, to take away the cost on, on housing. housing you, yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got money sitting there. If you bought a million five, I'm hypothetical. What, I mean, how, how many houses would that, I mean, that's doing one building in there. How much deduction would a million five get you in electricity and say, Maybe 30 homes or 50 homes at average you know, footprint. I mean, that's the kind of numbers yeah. you know, that would be interesting to see. Yeah. If it's worth investment from us to help do that with money we have to sell a product that you know you're getting more value of a house, you spend more on the house because now you're paying the electric bill too low. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, you know, if you uh, uh, Laban Bontrager, I don't know if you know Laban uh, Dennis down he yeah. they just built the first spec house with solar on it. Uh, out on west side. Uh, yeah, out on correction well, road. We changed the, we changed uh, the size of the land. And so that was kind of an interesting thing to see if you could get your money back from the solar. And and uh, I think he got his money back, but it, you know, it wasn't a, a lot. And, and of course, he, he got a lot of used equipment. He, he built the solar as inexpensively as he could. On that. So how big is the plant, the site here for the uh, city? It's about eight acres. And how many megawatts? It, 
So it's uh, 1.3 megawatts. Uh, and so it's always easier to me to think in terms of the production of electricity. So I think it produces uh, about $250,000 a year uh, in electricity on it. Catalyst, uh, 1.5 million. It produces uh, about $400 a day in electricity out there on average. And, you know, so if you plug those numbers in, if you pay uh, 1.5 million and you got $400 a day in electricity, that's okay, but it's, it's kind of right there to break even. But if you get a grant, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, we need to be looking for some grants for solar, <laughs> Mr. Vance. <laughs> so, I don't think we give you any direction. So, what well, do we really need to do? I, I guess do. we need a plan, maybe, like did you, David said. Did y'all put this out? That's why we're here, because when we started discussing it, there's a lot of unknowns and variables and what was the actual goal? Was build it affordable workforce housing. Right, but I think what we did accomplish today is knowledge that we have to have the infrastructure really to be able to maximize that space. Um, so so either CDBGDR will be a great yeah. avenue to pursue that infrastructure. You gotta have a some kind of plan. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and we're working on plans on the South Campus, and we can do some plans, preliminary plans and stuff for the residential area too. I mean, what we're doing on South Campus is with the thought of that we need to run water and sewer across uh, Pusser to get in to the residential. We just haven't laid out anything over there in the residential. And we're having conversations with Florida Housing uh, Association, you know, trying to see where's the money for workforce housing, where are some of those uh, type of things. So now the, the CDBG DR uh, funds, uh, trying to remember the, the number, it's three or four hundred million dollars that they've got at the states, but it's just for repair of housing. Uh, but some of us are in a conference call, and I thought the same thing, is I think they're going to have money left over in that. They think they're going to use all that money, and so if they have money left over, then it may be available for new housing, for workforce housing. But they've got to go through the process to, to give everybody that needs home repairs uh, all that process to run, and then if they have left over money, there'll be some uh, funding for that. So building houses in Alabama, like crazy. They ain't a field safe. They'll build one on the road, around the peanut field, whatever. What's the difference in Alabama and Florida? What's the difference in 15, 20 miles of them building all them houses and we're not, we're not doing it here? The big difference is Alabama supports industry. They have all types of incentives. They put in play, get businesses there. The other thing, unless they, Houston County has changed, you don't have to have a building permit. Build a house. Well, and, you know, I've built 12 spec houses in the last year and a half on it. And uh, workforce housing, $150,000, $60,000 range. And uh, it's hard to make any money. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, Go to Dothan the back way from yeah. over where I live and look at all the houses going up. So that, that's what I say. It's kind of a dilemma if uh, there's a need for you know, those houses are selling as quick as they can, but, uh, but you're, more you're kind of the appraised value and, and cost of construction. It's, it's, uh, I can see why people aren't jumping out there building lots of workforce housing to. Yeah, but if we offered the land as an incentive at a reduced price yeah, or helps. whatever, yeah. then helps. we might be able to persuade someone yeah. to come build. Yeah. David, David, I mean, that subdivision I got, I bought out of foreclosure. If you were building that subdivision, there's no way you would. You'd be upside down. You'd, you'd, that's right. 
So if you took the, the, the land component out of it, as far as the cost analysis, and maybe tax fees, it probably would make it more. Yeah, if, if, you, if there's, uh, that helps. Yeah. I think a, a key would be trying to get some of the state agencies or something to see that we have a need for workforce housing and provide some financing and some help like that. And uh, that's something that we're kind of exploring out there because the need's there, you know, just putting it all together. Okay. So, yeah. what are we going to do? Well, it sounds like we need the preliminary engineer drawings and to possibly consider applying for the utilities. Yeah. To be able to then say, okay, we have the utilities to maximize the density to be able to put it out to bid. Yeah, you know, it kind of goes back to the CDB GDR. If they they let us call that all out there one project, and we draw a big circle around it, we may be able to get. 10 or 15 million dollars in this CDBG DR funding. Uh, so if we do able to get that, we gotta have a, a very quick response on what we want out there, right? Or is there a time frame on that? Well, that, this first application due November right. 30th, and we'll have some put together okay. oh, to, good, good, to, good. to turn in. Uh, we'll convince them that we're shovel ready. I mean, it don't. It wouldn't take that long to lay that out. What you get in trouble is the, the you know, the topography and, and yeah, all the grading and stuff. But you don't yeah. need, to, you don't have to have that. Yeah, no, no, we can do layouts. Right, and, just to lay out the uh, and, and we common use, space and the wetlands and the right, the size of the lot and all that. Well, yeah. doesn't doesn't some of that right. now the mixed media use is that. Does, does that change the density on that? Because I know some of them is like one to twelve. Mm -hmm. One to twelve is mixed use. Mixed use, okay. That's where we need to focus on some of the stuff too. Because yeah. I mean, is there a need? I mean, I, I haven't been to in thirty years, but is is there a need for you know, apartments for like students and all? Even if they come from out here, is there that need for that component of <clears throat> residential housing? I think there's a need there. It's just a disconnect between what they pay for the need. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's kind of. That's the reason people like to build yeah. a whole lot of apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else before we open it up for comments? I was just going to say that you all will be seeing in the next couple weeks, we'll be coming with an actual, so y'all gave us your official blessing on what to apply for, but now we know we can only submit five applications. So once we get clarity on whether Endeavor is one project or has to be broken down, we'll be coming back to say, are you okay with us applying for, based on what we feel like y'all have indicated the priorities are. That'll be when y'all can say yes or no, we want you to switch this around uh, before we get too in depth with putting together those applications. That's all I had. Okay. We're going to open it up for comments uh, on this. Does anybody get, uh, let's go ahead with the comments. Fred, do we have right. any comments? If any member of the public uh, connected via Zoom would uh, like to speak, um, you may use star nine if dialed in via telephone or the raise hand feature on your computer or mobile device. Uh, as a reminder, you have three minutes. Um, first uh, hand I see raised is let's talk with Ronstens. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Hi. I just wanted to make a comment um, regarding your um, potential plans for the gym as far as it being a conference center. I ask you, and of course, um, the steering committee um, as well, whenever they're appointed, to keep in mind that we should try to uh, take in consideration our youth. I know we want to make the conference center um, the main focus point, but if we can encompass uh, sporting events, our kids here would love to be able to host sporting events in that gymnasium, um, meaning like volleyball, wrestling, um, basketball. Our kids travel a lot out of our county and take money out of the county. 
it'll be great if we can be a host here in the county and bring the money back in. It will be a, a, a boost for our kids, a morale boost for our kids. And I think you really need to consider um, being able to use that building, not only for a conference center, but also to host sporting events, which means uh, maintaining and keeping the bleachers. So I wanted to say that. And the second thing I wanted to say is regarding the steering committee, I heard you guys kind of questioning, you know, who's on the steering committee. Please keep an open mind as to having people on the steering committee that represent the entire county, all aspects of the community, and even um, pockets of the community that you may not be familiar with, that you may not know that they're involved with. So keep that in mind too, because all of those ideas and creativity um, will be needed when you're trying to put together um, the steering committee. So I ask you to please keep that in mind as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ross. Fred, do we have anybody else? I see no more hands raised. Okay. Um, I take that back. We do have one right here, Deborah Buckhalter. Go ahead, Ms. Deborah. She's muted on her end. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Could you give us the names again of the steering committee of uh, uh, potential appointees one more time? It was going a little fast for me. Please. They're potential until we decide on them, but uh, we can give you the potential, but I really wouldn't. Go ahead. Could you please? Could you? Thank you. Lily Clark, Brian Braxton. Slow down. Deborah, I'll Can just we... send you this packet at the end of this meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else with any comments or questions? There are no more hands raised online. Okay, our next meeting is when? 501. 501. Good thing we're here. Does anybody else have anything that wants about Endeavor or anything at this time? Okay, hearing nothing. We'll we will adjourn till five oh one.